Well, hello friends, and welcome to the Serenity OS update for August 2023. It has been another pleasant month in the project with just over 1200 commits going into the master branch from about 80 individual contributors. So pretty much the usual pace. And as usual, we have a bunch of different things to look at today. So let's get started. Well, hello friends. I'm going to highlight a couple of neat contributions from some folks this month. Uh, the first is from Monroe, and he has done something to calendar that's been sorely missing. Um, until now, if you tried to add an event to the calendar, it would just say, uh, yeah, I don't know how to do that. Uh, but now if you double click on a, on a day and you add an event, you know, my cool event, probably not at midnight. Um, then we will see my cool event happened on the 16th for sure. And everybody was there to enjoy it. And I can add another one here uh, and it shows up in the UI. And um, is a little bit unfortunate though, that if I try to access my event, I, I can't do that. It just prompts me to add another event. Um, but, you know, baby steps, right? Yak steps. I can save the uh, calendar file to disk and then uh, open it up again with the calendar application and my events are still there. Uh, I believe that this is just a simple uh, JSON file with the events in it. So uh, thank you to Monroe for adding events to the calendar. Hopefully we can keep making the calendar more and more featureful. Uh, something else that has happened this month is that uh, Daniel spent a whole bunch of time uh, trying to improve our binary size. Um, he implemented a bunch of features to help the startup times in CI for LibWeb and, and reduce the binary size overall. Uh, the first one is that um, in Serenity, by default, we say that Ubisan will be fatal, and that um, eliminates a whole bunch of code that tried to uh, recover the process state after failing a UBSAN check. So now that we don't have to worry about that, um, the compiler deleted all that dead code and that decreased the binary size of libweb by 57%, which is actually kind of scary, but um, that's that. Uh, the next thing was that uh, in libelf, he added some changes to uh, cache the most recently looked up symbol when uh, loading a, an elf file. And it turns out that uh, that decreased the startup time of libweb by about 10%, which is kind of impressive, but it makes sense that uh, if you just looked up a symbol, you, the next one you look up might be the same one. Uh, next thing was uh, setting the visibility inlines hidden flag in the compiler. This uh, tells the compiler to, uh, if you have an inline function in a, in a header file or a template, it will set the visibility of that um, in each translation unit uh, to hidden. And that means that doing a symbol lookup on a uh, on an inlined function will be just a local symbol lookup. It won't be a global weak symbol lookup um, like you get by default. And uh, this was a was a huge boon. So I think uh, the the total result of this was that execution time for uh, our libweb unit tests in CI, not the layout ref tests, but just the, the unit tests uh, went down from 34 seconds to 15 seconds. So uh, pretty significant. And I'm sure that uh, as we keep using the browser and other applications will, uh, with things like UBSAN enabled, uh, we'll, we'll see a, a lot of benefits from this kind of uh, binary size and startup time reduction. So. Thank you, Daniel, for that. Uh, next, uh, there is the start of a RISC-V port. Um, it's not quite bootable yet, but you can build it. Um, this was done uh, in, I think it was started by uh, Sonke. So uh, probably butchered the, the heck out of your name there, but uh, thank you for looking into that. And uh, it's definitely gotten some people excited. I know that uh, Kleinus has made a bunch of contributions to that. Um, and I think uh, you got Daniel excited. So I'm looking forward to seeing more uh, ports, though uh, 
I'm thinking that uh, with Risk Five and, and Arm Sixty Four on on <laughs> in progress, uh, we have our hands full a little bit. So hopefully we can get both of those booting on real hardware, and then either to think about other things or uh, get more people who have those hardware interested in bare metal. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, a couple more things. I know that uh, Ali has been keeping up his additions to the WASM implementation, and uh, this month he added some uh, support for SIMD. Uh, I'm not sure how to demo that, but um, thank you, Ali, for adding SIMD to LibWASM. All right, and the last thing I wanted to show today was something I missed last month, and that is that uh, over uh, back in June and July, uh, some of our German friends, uh, I believe it was, uh, let's see here, Linus, Dominica, Ivory, Lily, and IO Error ported uh, Super Tux Cart to the system. And I think the volume is a bit loud on this guy. So we'll see how that sounds, but um, loads with the menu just fine. It does complain that the GL version is a little bit on the old side because this is using our software GL renderer, but uh, if we pick a cute animal to play Super Tux Cart with, we can get all the way to playing a race. If we're playing on this icy map, uh, the performance does leave a little bit to be desired, but I can't really comment on any of the uh, actual problems with the rendering here. I feel like that's something maybe Yale can do, uh, either later this month or uh, we hit him up on Discord. I'm sure there's some obvious problems with this, but uh, it does seem to be letting us race, though the performance not super great, but it's not awful. Um, I could maybe get through one lap here before I decide that I wanted to play uh, Mario Kart instead, but uh, here we go. We can actually play Super Tux Kart on Serenity OS, and it only complains about uh, half the time about GL errors and that sort of thing, but uh, I'm sure there's plenty of, of obvious places for improvement on this, and I I hope to see this one uh, capture our GL experts the same way that uh, other uh, interesting OpenGL games have in the past. So excited to see where this goes, and uh, thank you again to our our German crew from the conference they were at for spending the time to support this one. I think that's all I had for this month. So. Okay, now I have a couple of things I wanted to demonstrate as well. And the first one is going to be in the shell. So we have a new feature where uh, while you're typing a command, it no longer shows as red while the command is incomplete um, because of this new feature that Ronak69 did where um, if you're typing something that is the start of a command, not a completely executable command yet, but at least a valid start of some known command, uh, then we display it in yellow. And this actually feels way better than being all red. So previously, it would look like this and all red all the way until you've typed um, like a valid executable. But now it's yellow until it becomes white. And it's one of those things that just once you see it and you feel it, it just feels so right. And uh, everybody loves it. So um, thank you very much, Ronak69, for implementing this. It was a, a small change, but it makes a huge difference in the in the way the shell feels to use. Um, next thing I wanted to show you on the command line is uh, Zcat. So Zcat is just a uh, command line utility. I think it's actually an alias for uh, Gunzip, but it's supposed to take like a, a gzipped stream and allow you to cat it. So maybe we have to create something like that first, like hello friends. Uh, we'll pipe that to gzip and make a file. Uh, that's not how that works. Okay. Um, how do I do that then? Hello. And then we gzip hello. Okay. And then I should be able to zcat hello.gz. Yes, exactly. Maybe I can even do this pipe that to zcat. Not quite. Okay. Like that? No. Uh, all right. Well, <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not quite as powerful as what I'm used to, but at least it could do, uh, at least it could do this. So um, this was implemented by Supercomputer 7. So thank you for, for doing that. And uh, I think we can make this utility even more powerful in the future. And then of course, Tim Ledbetter has worked a bunch on random command line stuff. Uh, one thing I saw was that he added a uh, user add dash G, I think it was. Uh, for setting the group uh, when you're creating a user. So let's say that I wanted to create a user uh, and the name of the user should be Coolio and I want him to be in group, uh, I don't know, 6969. That would be pretty Coolio. That's not how that works. Invalid option for invalid value for option get. All right, all right. <laughs> Maybe I have to do a group add first. Uh, group ad g6969 coolios okay and now i can user add yes look at that there's coolio and coolios um <laughs> so <laughs> that's uh that's user add dash g for specifying the the group that a new user should be in so thank you tim for implementing that and tim also worked a whole bunch on the find program so find of course uh, recurses through the directory tree and uh, filters what you see uh, based on a bunch of criteria that you can specify. So find now has, uh, I mean, find slash just lists everything from the root recursively, but I think we now have regex. So this is like, uh, if you want to search for, uh, I guess, super tux cart, let's say. Does that work? I guess maybe I have to do something like this. Yes, then we can find them. And then I can even do super. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> that's regex. And I think if you do i regex, it's like case insensitive. So this also works. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and Tim also added, uh, if you want to look for like only executables, for example, you can do like find slash executable. And then it should only show you executables. Uh, of course, keep in mind that uh, directories are executable in Unix. That's why we're seeing so many things. But uh, maybe we can do this. Do we support that? Yes. So with type F, it's only files, no directories. And then we see only executable programs. Um, now that I see these, it makes me wonder if we could make these things clickable. Like, uh, you know, how we have this thing where uh, LS, for example, shows, um, makes hyperlinked file names. I feel like find could do that too, if you wanted to. Anyways, just an idea for the future. Yeah, so find has executable, but also like writable. So you can look for like every writable um, file in slash dev. Um, that's not a whole lot. <laughs> Maybe if I'm root, that would be more successful. Wait, why are we not finding Writable files in dev. Hmm. Oh, these are not files. Of course, they're not type F. They're type something else, like devices. That makes sense. OK. So these are writable devices. Uh, and then also readable. And my understanding is that the regex syntax, by the way, is the POSIX extended regex. So you should be able to do stuff like um, what will be an example of that? Like, uh, I guess like something like this, where we have two options. So either TTY or PTS. And we should find both of those. Uh, it did not work. Hmm. Am I doing that right? <laughs> yeah, should have matched those. Okay, I thought that would work. Hmm. Okay, that did not work. Uh, I was misled. <laughs> I saw a commit saying that it was using uh, extended regex syntax. All right. Anyways, um, thank you, Tim, for continuing to improve our command line utilities. It is very, very awesome. Um, then the last thing I wanted to show you was in Pixel Paint, where Toshten has worked a bunch on various features. And uh, if I open up my sweet yak wallpaper here, uh, 
I can show you some of the new brush tools. The UI here is not really responding to the font size, but please ignore. Um, and let me choose a dodge mode for the brush. Uh, that was, I need to get a color also. Uh, maybe I need to select the layer. No, <laughs> why is nothing happening? Oh, there we go. <laughs> is that ex exposure? I don't know what that's supposed to say. Um, yeah, so dodge and burn are two new brush modes this month implemented by Torsten, both of them. Um, so thank you, Torsten, for making more cool stuff for Pixel Paint. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, I wanted to mention about some of the games. Um, we've seen um, some new card backs for our card games. So normally you would see Buggy here, our uh, old mascot character, but uh, we now have a set of card backs that you can choose from. And um, these were added by Tom. So I'm gonna pick the Yak deck here. Uh, we also had another game uh, game graphics related thing in chess, which is very minor, but um, I think it's still nice, which is that the king in the classic set, actually the one that I already have selected, the king now has a more round look. Uh, I can't even show you how he used to look like, but he used to be a bit more pointy <laughs> and now he's round and um, cubic love went and um, made the king a bit rounder so I didn't have to be so edgy anyway thank you cubic love for that and Tom for for the card backs and I um, think that will be it for for the desktop today and that's everything we had to show you today so thank you so much for checking in and staying up to date with the project uh, thank you to Andrew for co-hosting with me today. Uh, if you want to come chat about Serenity OS or participate in development, we are all hanging out on the Discord server. There's a link to it in the video description below. Uh, if you want to sponsor development, there are links for that as well. Uh, and uh, thanks again for uh, checking out the video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.